I commend them to the House. Call the Honourable Phil Goff. Uh, Mr Speaker, I not only want to uh, support this bill, uh, together with my colleagues in the Labor uh, benches, but I also want to commend the Minister on, and his predecessor, actually, uh, on the way in which they have conducted the process of legislation through the House. You know, in recent times we've seen so many legislative outrages going back to just the last week of session where we were pushing through things under urgency, which never went to a select committee at all, Mr Speaker. Didn't go to a select committee, didn't get the benefit of uh, people who were ordinary citizens, people who were experts in their field, to come in and to have a look at the legislation and to make sure that what this parliament is intending to do was actually carried out in the form of the legislation. And this bill actually allows us to put into effect the primary piece of legislation, which is a very thorough overhaul of our criminal justice system. In fact, the primary bill, Mr Speaker, is a massive 526 pages long. Uh, it, it's a huge change. Uh, and uh, Scott Simpson was very supportive of that change and attributed it somehow uh, to the national government. In fact, this came into effect as a result of a project set up in October 2007. In fact, I recall working on it uh, some years before that as Minister of Justice. Uh, it was a huge job to do. It was a really important job to do. Because I think that most people looking at the New Zealand justice system say, well, we've got a generally a good system of justice. We have integrity. We have an independent judiciary. Uh, we can rely on the quality uh, uh, and the principles of those who operate within the justice system, both on the bench uh, and in the Ministry of Justice, uh, and the people that support them. But there were some very obvious problems with the New Zealand justice system. Uh, it came down into about four different categories. Uh, there was excessive cost, and that excessive cost was not caused by thoroughness, but rather by inefficiency. And wherever we can, within the public service, we need to reduce inefficiencies. We need to make sure that things are done right, they're done properly, uh, but they're also done efficiently and we're getting value for money. And our court system was replete with uh, problems that meant that court cases took longer, uh, and uh, we have an obligation in this House to cut down the costs that are involved. There was also excessive delay. Court cases were taking far too long from first appearance to the final disposal of the cases. And, you know, when court cases are drawn out in that way, then you create problems for everybody involved in the system. You create problems for the victim, most importantly. Uh, because uh, the, the victim has that agony of the court case drawn out over a much longer period. You create problems for the defendant, and all defendants are innocent until proven guilty, so if the court case does not stack up, then that person again is on tender hooks for much longer uh, than, the, uh, than, than should be the case. It creates problems for the juries. Uh, people that are taking time off work that are being paid a, a pittance uh, and are prepared to participate in our justice system. And the really good thing about our justice system, it allows for peer evaluation. Uh, but they find that, that much, longer, much longer periods of their time are required if you have excessive delays and if you have inefficiency. The third problem with the system was excessive complexity. Uh, and this was uh, very clearly the case with legislation being spread across several statutes uh, and seven, uh, seven different categories of offence. Uh, the Law Commission actually went so far as describing the court system as, quote unquote, an impenetrable maze. And uh, when the, the Law Commission, with uh, eminent uh, jurists on it, uh, reached that determination, you can really believe that there is uh, some credibility in that criticism. And the fourth and last problem with the system was that it. Uh, provided an outdated legislative framework. So what we had is this very thorough process that involved the Law Commission uh, and the Ministry of Justice going back to October 2007 under a Labor government 
setting to, to make some real changes in our justice system uh, that will improve it considerably. And uh, I think an earlier speaker mentioned that this is likely to free up something like 10,000 court sitting hours, uh, that there will be uh, three to 500 fewer jury trials and a reduction of six to nine weeks uh, in the time taken to conclude uh, a, a jury trial. Those are huge advances. And that primary legislation has gone through, and it's important that we pass this legislation uh, so that the Act, the 2011 Act, can come fully into force in July of this year. Uh, it is largely, as has been mentioned, a, 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 a bill that makes technical changes. It amends the Criminal Procedures Act uh, 2011 and 18 other enactments in relation to the criminal procedure matters. These are matters which are largely things such as cross-referencing, uh, technical matters, amendments to allow procedures and processes to operate as intended, um, the references to crime reflecting that the repeal of the definition of crime in the Crimes Act uh, 1961 to make explicit the type of offence that's being referred to where the context requires it, and it also clarifies the jurisdiction of community magistrates. So those things are technical, but the Primary Act has real and important changes. And I want to go back to what I was saying before. Uh, a good government, a government that is not arrogant and overbearing, uh, takes into account the criticisms made of the legislation as introduced. Uh, too often that doesn't happen. Too often you just see straight out arrogance, we'll ram this through, we've got the numbers uh, to hell with the principle. Uh, it's almost a matter of principle uh, for the national government if the opposition is opposed to it not to make any changes. And that's really unfortunate because that's not how a good democracy works. Uh, in this case the primary legislation um, did involve uh, a range of things that, that were um, quite controversial and uh, they included things like the threshold for jury trials uh, it was going to be extended up to I think about three years before you could get a jury trial yet a jury trial is something that is uh, a traditional right under our British system of justice and it's not something that we should give away lightly uh, it, the original bill required the defence to identify and disclose issues in dispute before the trial and that would have been at the jeopardy of the position uh, of the defendant. It allowed courts to proceed in the absence of a defendant. This was really quite remarkable. You know, again, a fundamental principle of justice is that no trial should proceed in the absence of the defendant, Mr Speaker. And it also involved uh, the right to silence and compliance cost issues. There could have been a huge dispute over this piece of legislation, but quite sensibly, the then Minister, uh, Simon Power, uh, decided that he would listen to the criticisms that were made. Uh, he took a step back from those issues. And the result is that we have a piece of legislation before us that actually has the support of all sides of the House. That makes this a very powerful piece of legislation. It's been carefully considered. It's sought and achieved consensus. And I've just got to say again, Mr Speaker, if only in areas, I was thinking of the uh, public health and disability bill that was rammed through the other night against, with, with the Attorney General himself saying that it breached the Bill of Rights. You know, that was an appalling process. That was a government f that for no good reason forced things through under urgency, didn't follow good process, didn't seek consensus. This bill stands by contrast to that and therefore this bill will be enduring. The other thing that, that I'd like to finally add is that there, there was uh, some controversy uh, over this bill in the sense that it provided a regulatory power that's commonly known as the Henry VIII power. That's the power to make regulations that amend statutes. And again, uh, to be fair to the chair of the committee and uh, to be fair to the minister involved, uh, Chester Burrows, uh, they agreed that, uh, that, that this was inappropriate and this was taken out. So I think all in all we have a piece of legislation that is now 
uh, that has followed good process, that has been properly researched, carefully planned, that will make a real difference. It's not a piece of rubbish like the gang patches bill. Uh, this is good legislation and we're supporting it. Mr. Speaker. I call uh, David Clendon. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker.